Hi, it's Alexis Hasselberger, Time Management and Productivity Coach. So here's something that you may have heard me say before, but I'm going to say it again because it bears repeating. You, me, everybody else, we are all going to die with a big, long list of things we did not do. Now, hopefully this is going to be a long time from now, a very, very, very long time from now. However, the truth remains, we're not going to do it all, right? It's just not going to happen. There's always going to be way more things to do that we want to do, that we should do, that we can do, than we are actually capable of doing. So what does this mean? It means that prioritization is so incredibly important. I know people talk about prioritization all the time, um, but it actually is, it's crucial to getting the right things done because we want to prioritize in such a way that we know that the things that we did today were more important than the things we didn't do. And there are always going to be things we didn't do. And when we think about prioritization, we often think about a couple of things, or these are the frameworks that I see everywhere. And spoiler, I don't like these frameworks at all. So these frameworks are um, high, medium, and low, or P1, P2, P3. Um, they are the sort of ranking system. And the reason that I do not like these forms of priority is that they don't actually help us figure out what we need to do today, right now, right? You might be looking at your list and everything is high priority, or it might feel like that. Or you might be looking at your list and you have you know, 15 different P1 things you need to deal with on there. And so we sit, sit there in kind of analysis paralysis, right? We don't know which of these high importance things is the one to start working on first. And so we can get kind of stuck there. What I like much, much better, and this is the prioritization method that I teach to all of my clients, is date-based prioritization. So not about the due date of a thing, but what are we actually going to do today to move the things forward in order to meet those due dates, to meet those deadlines? And when we prioritize using a date-based um, framework, what happens is that we are going from aspirational to realistic planning. We are going from, well, I just hope I can get all these high-priority things done today, not going to happen to, okay, let me look at my calendar. What do I actually have time for? Okay. Yep. I've got these five different things they are all high priority. Okay. Where, what can I do? How can I fit these in? Where might I need to have some conversations about the deadlines? Like, what do I need to do? So date-based prioritization is something that, you know, I really like, and that's something that I teach to, to basically everyone. Now, something that comes up so often when I teach people this method, it's like one of the stumbling blocks is that if we assign dates to things, and then we have to move a date for any number of very good reasons, then people start to feel bad, right? Like I put it on this date and now I can't make it on this date. And now I feel like I'm a failure. I feel like, you know, I planned and then I can't follow my plan. What's wrong with me, right? Nothing, nothing is wrong with you. And I want to change your mind about what it means when we need to change a plan, when we need to change the priorities. This is something that happens all of the time. And it's because we get new information, new information that might change our priorities. And so when we get new information, what is sillier? Is it sillier to just keep going on with the plan that we already had before we had this new information? Or is it better to change our plan as the case may be based on the new information that we may have now? I'm going to argue it's the latter, which is why we don't need to feel like a failure if we have changed our plans. We have simply adapted to new information, which is exactly what we're supposed to do. So I'm gonna give you a real life example of this um, from my world. So uh, last year, or maybe the year before, I can't remember, I was out of the country for a little while and I had a friend who was house sitting and she called me in the middle of the, you know, I think it was the middle of the night for me, but I was kind of working a weird schedule. And she let me know that the boiler for our house, the water boiler was leaking and that she thinks it might've been leaking for a little while, um, and I started researching, I don't know what happens if your boiler is leaking. And it turned out like, this is a big, scary thing that can happen, right? Because if it were to, um, if it were to kind of burst when she wasn't there, she wasn't there the whole time, she was just kind of checking in, then that could like flood our entire downstairs. And that would be a lot of money and a lot of pain and a lot of cleanup. And so this thing that I had not planned to do that day. In fact, I had planned, I had a full day. It was one of my no meeting Mondays. I had like this full day planned. I'm going to get all this work done, make a lot of progress. All of that stuff became less important than making sure that my house did not flood from this boiler, right? And so, yeah, I didn't 
but I didn't feel great about the fact that I moved all that stuff, mainly because I wanted to get it done, but I knew it was absolutely the right decision to shift my focus into finding a contractor to install a new water boiler for us so that we didn't have some disaster on our hands when we were halfway across the world. So this is what I mean by incorporating new information and adapting. Now, hopefully you don't have something this dramatic happening all of the time, but all of the time, there's wild cards that pop up, right? There's stuff I didn't know about yesterday that has to be done today. And we need to shift our plans to make that happen, right? Just because something was a priority before doesn't mean it's a top priority now. And we can shift our plans without feeling bad. Now, I'm going to take a strange little turn here for a moment, but I think you're going to see why. So, you know, Marie Kondo, she of the, you know, sparking joy and putting everything into place, the magic of tidying up. I can't remember exactly what the name is, but it was Marie Kondo, the tidying queen from Japan, right? So she recently was interviewed and she was in, she has three little kids now. And in this interview, she said that tidiness, I'm paraphrasing here, tidiness is actually not her top priority anymore. She realized that with kids, she wants to be spending her time in a different way. And that while tidiness used to be kind of her highest value, and of course, that's how she's built her name. That's how we know who she is. That's actually not something that is the highest priority for her in her life right now with her three small kids. And I think what I mean, when I read this, I just, I was just in awe, right? Because for somebody who is a really public persona to do a complete 180, I mean, I'm sure she's still a tidy person in many ways, but to do kind of a 180 on what she had said all along, you know, I think I remember specifically only have 30 books in your house, right? Or she had all of these rules around these things to have been able to say, you know what, my life is different now. My priorities are different now. And for that, I am going to change how I'm using my time. I just thought that was pretty awesome, right? So if someone like that, who is in the public eye can change their priorities, and not feel bad about it, not feel guilty about it, say, hey, there's new information and I'm changing because of that, I think you can do it too. And so that's what I'm gonna challenge you to do. I'm gonna challenge you to stop feeling bad when you have to make a change to your plans. You now are making a change because you have new information you didn't have access to when you made that plan. And so the right move is to change your plan if the new information necessitates that. So stop feeling guilty. It's okay to move something because when you're doing so, you're simply adapting to new information. Now, if you like this type of content and you want to keep seeing it, make sure to subscribe. I will be in your feed every single Monday. Just as she said, if you want, if you like this content, you might want to subscribe because only about 23.4% of the people that watch our videos are subscribed. So it'd be a big help if you subscribed.